Hello, my name is Thierry Fami. I'm the CEO of Adinsoft, the company that develops Excelstat, one of the mainstream statistical software. I'm still involved in some research projects, and recently I've been working on the uh, quality of CATA data. We've developed a new procedure that's named CATARECT, and that stands for CATA Rejection and Acceptation Tests. I will be explaining what CATA data are, why we use CATA surveys, the CATAREC procedure itself, and I will finish by uh, mentioning a few further analyses that can be run on CATA data. So what are CATA data? Uh, CATA stands for CATA, uh, for uh, check all that applies, and uh, CATA surveys uh, consist of a list of items or descriptors that are provided to the respondents. And all the respondents need to do is check the items they think match the product they are currently evaluating. An alternative uh, for CATA is four choice uh, surveys. It's another way to submit binary questions to respondents. While CATA is not superior to forced choice, it is currently very trendy in the sensory data analysis uh, area. Uh, the advantage over forced choice is that it is more compact. So here are two layouts, one with CATA, one that corresponds to CATA, and one to forced choice. As you can see with CATA, all the uh, respondent needs to do is check a box if he feels uh, that characteristic matches the product. While for forced choice, the uh, respondent must decide whether he thinks yes or no, the, pro the characteristic matches the product, and he will not be able to go a step further he if he hasn't made a choice. Why do we use CATA surveys? They are currently very trendy, for example, in the food and beverage industry, where the marketing teams want to understand which characteristics uh, of a product are uh, linked uh, to um, a, a, higher, a higher liking. Once they've gathered that information uh, from the consumers, they are able to go back to their product design or R&D team and ask them to modify a product so that it's uh, a, big, a bigger success on the market. CATA surveys usually involve a set of A assessors. Of course, the more yet they are, the better it is. Uh, these assessors are evaluating P products. These products can already be on the market, either your products or products from the competition, and uh, some products you are currently evaluating and designing. These products are evaluated using D uh, attributes, and of course the selection of these attributes are very important. Uh, is very important because it will condition uh, the. It will have a very important impact on the decisions you will be making. Um, it is also recommended that you ask the uh, respondents to uh, give a score on the products. So that will be on a Likert scale from 1 to 5 or 0 to 10. Last, you can ask the respondents to uh, define what the ideal product uh, pro characteristics would be. Our goal here is not to make an assessment of the CATA approach itself. Uh, you, for that, I recommend your reading the Neuert article from last year that is very interesting. Uh, what we want to do here is provide the surveyors with tools that allow them to better control the quality of the responses. Most of the results that we are uh, giving uh, and the methods we are developing here can be applied to forced choice surveys as well. So the cataract procedure starts with evaluation of the assessor. How many times has each assessor checked an item? On the bar chart below, you can see cross products and cross uh, attributes, how many times uh, an assessor has checked uh, items. So here, for example, we see that the first assessor uh, has been uh, checking uh, the items in the, in the forms 15% of the time. And this is pretty low compared to the other assessors. Uh, we see here a confidence interval, uh, which is a, a, the classical confidence interval on proportions. And it's here to help you uh, define whether the assessor is an average assessor or, has, or is probably a little bit more extreme. 
depending on the situation, you might want to remove these assessors or group them for a separate uh, analysis. The next step uh, consists of evaluating attributes. Um, one of the effects you might expect is fatigue from the respondents, uh, either because of the number of products they are evaluating or because of the number of attributes you are re uh, asking them to make an, an evaluation for. Uh, here, we do not see that effect on this uh, bar chart. However, we see some interesting uh, features. We can see that, for example, juicy is uh, checked very often, while bitter or grainy, uh, which are uh, 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 characteristics of apples you would not uh, like, are uh, seldom uh, checked. So uh, juicy is not discriminating, while bitter or grainy is. The next step crosses assessors and attributes. Uh, you, on, the, on the map below, which is a heat map, uh, you can uh, visualize the various responding patterns and that allows uh, seeing which attributes are consensual or not. So here, can, uh, for example, we can see that uh, crispy or tasty or uh, apple flavor are not consensual. Some, uh, some uh, assessors will be uh, checking these attributes while some are not checking them. Uh, a next step on this map is a co-clustering that allows to uh, display a version of that map with assessors grouped uh, depending on how similar they are uh, to each other and the same for attributes. The next step of the cataract procedure uh, consists of evaluating the association between attributes. Are some attributes redundant, either because similar uh, or uh, totally dissimilar, or are they linearly related? To do that, we compute a multivariate independent sky squares test on the binary variables. That's an extension, a multivariate extension of the classical chi square test you would run on a contingency table or a cross tab. Um, once uh, this, if this test is uh, leads to a rejection of the independence null hypothesis, you are able you are able to run uh, pairwise uh, comparisons. We also uh, display polychoric correlations uh, between the attributes between the binary variables, and if a liking score has been recorded, we display a bisserial correlation between the liking score and each attribute. This is an example of uh, um, a, a pairwise comparison uh, between attributes for a given product. So here we can see that uh, juicy and firm are considered as, uh, for them, the null hypothesis of uh, independence is rejected. So that means that for that product, they, are, uh, they can be considered, uh, considered as redundant. Once uh, you have uh, evaluated the quality of your data, you can remove some assessors or remove some uh, attributes because they are uh, redundant or because the assessors are too extreme. And once you are satisfied with the quality of your data, uh, you can uh, move forward and do further analysis on your KETA data. Uh, Miners and Castura in 2013 uh, suggested a variety of analyses that can be run on Kata data. The first step consists of a Cochrane's Q test to evaluate for each attribute whether there are differences between products or not. If uh, some differences uh, are, dif are identified, which is really likely, pairwise comparisons can be computed to identify which products differentiate from each other. For attributes that do not show a difference, you should consider removing them. Uh, further analyses uh, can be run. You can run a correspondence analysis on the cross tabs, uh, mixing, uh, mixing attributes and um, products. Uh, this will give you a map uh, where you can position the products and the attributes. Uh, you can also run penalty analysis. This is a kind of ANOVA 
uh, which is run to identify which descriptors are must have, nice to have, or must not have. As a conclusion, we have added to the uh, CATA analysis procedure a series of descriptive uh, methods and tests grouped under CATARACT that allow uh, identifying potential outliers and redundant information and to remove it from more in-depth uh, analysis to make uh, the latter uh, more um, re relevant. We highly recommend that when creating CATA or forced choice surveys, the surveyors include some redundant in descriptors to assess the reliability of the assessors. Here are uh, three references we recommended you to uh, we recommend you to read if you're interested in the in the subject. Thank you very much for your attention. This was uh, our first, uh, this is our first uh, virtual conference. Uh, we hope there won't be too many uh, as we prefer to meet you in person. But of course, if you have any question, uh, we are uh, happy to answer any question by email or you can visit our virtual booth uh, during this uh, JSM 2020. Thank you very much and stay safe.